Hi, thanks for checking out this video. I'm your everyday Joe. You can call me Joe. You can call me every day. No, don't call me every day. Today, I'm going to be making an easy and delicious recipe using my air fry oven. It's a chicken and turkey meatloaf. It's going to be wicked good. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to be doing is uh, sauteing our vegetables here. That's basically some sliced mushrooms, onions, some garlic, and some seasoning. I'm going to keep this real simple here. So because the mushrooms take a little bit longer, uh, we're going to get the mushrooms in there and get those all uh, cooked up and kind of rendered down a little bit just so they shrink up all the water kind of goes away. So all I've got is a little bit of olive oil in here. Okay, so we're just going to let these toast up for a few minutes. I'm using a high heat, just a little bit of olive oil. I haven't added any salt to this at all yet because I want to get all that moisture out. Okay, so the mushrooms are just about there. So I'm going to add the onions next. And these are just uh, diced onions. Get that in there. Okay, we're going to get the garlic in there too. And I've got some green onions there. We're going to add all this in there. Like I said, this is a real simple recipe. It comes together quick. So we're going to let this soften a little bit. I'm going to add some of my seasoning here. And I'll leave the, uh, the recipes uh, instructions and the ingredients all down at the bottom of the description section. Uh, also, uh, what's in the seasoning here, this uh, curry, salt, some uh, white peppers in here. Uh, also some uh, garlic powder, onion powder, a little bit of rosemary too, and, and some thyme. But I'll leave all those, all those uh, uh, ingredients down in the uh, description at the bottom of the video. All right, so I have the, uh, the sauteed vegetables here just cooling. I, I turned the uh, induction cooktop off, so it's just cooling right now. It's probably just about a room temperature. In the bowl, I have some cube chicken breast. It's boneless and skinless. Uh, small cubes, uh, about that size there. They're going to shrink as they cook. And one pound of the ground turkey breast here, or ground turkey meat. Take it all and put it all into the bowl. And I, I will be getting my hands in this because you got to mix it right in order to get all the seasoning, okay, dispersed well, okay, all right, so let's get that out of the way, all right, so I've got this, uh, the house, my house blend seasoning here, which uh, basically is some curry, some uh, curry powder, some salt, uh, white pepper, uh, rosemary, uh, some onion powder, garlic powder, uh, we've got some grated Asiago and Parmesan cheese. So, and I'll leave all the measurements down at the bottom uh, in the description section. You can take a look at that. So, let's just start working it together here. So, I want to make sure all the seasoning gets all throughout the mixture here. Because, uh, because I have the chicken cubed, uh, it's going to give a different, uh, uh, different texture. It won't be so tight like a meatball uh, so you're gonna have some some uh, uh, different textures when you're eating it afterwards all right all right so the next thing is these vegetables here the mushrooms and onions and garlic let's get that in there and that's going to also bring in some moisture in there okay let's get that all Moved around and I'm using a fork just so I don't uh, overwork the meat too much. And I can get in between and keep it kind of loose for now. Uh, so all the ingredients and all the uh, seasoning kind of disperse between it. Now this is pretty, pretty moist right now, uh, but because it's going to cook for a while, it, it may dry up. I want to kind of guarantee that it's not going to uh, uh, dry out too much. So I'm going to use some, just some white bread here. 
And I'm just gonna soak it in some chicken broth. So here, okay, and I'm just gonna squeeze that out. And I'm break that up, put it all in here. Okay, take the next one. So it's I'm only using two slices. Uh, now, depending on uh, the moisture that uh, you have in yours, you may have to use less, more. Uh, it's kind of your call. Okay, I'm just making sure everything is squeezed out. Get that all in here. And to add a little bit extra moisture, I got one egg. And that's also going to help bind everything together. So just beat that up, put that in. And again, all these uh, ingredients are uh, room temperature, uh, so they'll mix better. Peas and carrots. This is just a frozen, which uh, I've uh, thawed out a little bit. And get those in there too. And here we have some Worcestershire sauce. It's not Worcestershire or Worcestershire. We call it Worcestershire here in Boston. So just like Worcester, Massachusetts, Worcestershire. So get that in there. All right, and about a tablespoon of olive oil in there. So let's let's get that working here because we're going to have to get our hands in here at some point. Okay, I think this will be the point because I want to be able to feel you know, how much moisture, how soupy it is. Okay, get that in there and just. Kind of fold it in there just to work it, work it through. It's looking more wet than dry, which is okay because uh, for the amount of time it's going to cook, it's probably going to be uh, be fine. So uh, you've got a loaf similar to to that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wash my hands. Uh, I'm going to get the loaf pan out and we'll fill it up and get it into the air fry oven and I'll bring you back. All right, we have, uh, we have our mixture here. It's just sitting here. I I've took my, my pan here, my loaf pan. I just lined it with some parchment paper and sprayed it uh, just with some nonstick. This is basically gonna help me pull it out afterwards uh, when it's cooked. So it just that way it doesn't catch the sides. I can pull it out like a loaf. All right, let's take the, the mixture here and I'm just going to try to fill it and get it get it in there as best I can, uh, and then just press it down uh, enough so it uh, it shapes it. Okay, just all goes into the pan. All right, and it smells it smells awesome already. It's not even cooked. All right, let's get that out of the way. All right. And I'm just going to make sure it's all pressed down. Not super tight, but enough to work out any of the air pockets. So that way when we pull it out, it stays nice and whole. Okay, and you want to flatten it all over so you don't have peaks in the air fry oven. The heat is going to be blown from the top, so you don't want to burn the top. Uh, you want it to kind of cook evenly. Okay, so I'm just pushing it down like that. Okay, give it a little tap. Okay, so it settles more on the bottom. All right, now for the topping, this is optional. You don't have to use anything. You can just brush it with a little bit of egg or some uh, olive oil be fine too. Uh, I've got some of this, uh, it's kind of a sweet barbecue sauce, uh, just to give it a little bit of a smoky flavor. So I'm just going to brush some of that over the top. Okay, it's just about a couple of tablespoons worth. I, I go real light on it. Uh, I don't want it to be super sweet, but I do want to get that color. Okay, so get it on there nice and evenly. Now, before I put it in there, I want to guarantee that I, I get my temperature right. So I'm going to be using this ThermPro uh, meat thermometer. Uh, it's good for uh, putting inside the oven where this uh, the reader will stay outside. 
It's got a little magnet on the back end too, so uh, if it's magnetic, you can just stick it to the front of your, uh, your oven uh, or your counter. So I'm gonna get this in there, probably about halfway in. Try to go into the middle of it. All right. Get that into the air fryer oven. Right in the middle, I've got it all, almost to the bottom, so it's not so close to the top where it's gonna toast the top too fast. Uh, and uh, and uh, overcook the top and undercook the bottom. So let's close that. And this cord here can just stay on the countertop. I'm going to turn it on, power that on. Okay. And uh, hit the meat setting here to the chicken. And let's set it to Fahrenheit here uh, in the States. Uh, we use Fahrenheit. And you can see the setting here. Uh, it says it's currently at 64 degrees. It needs to go to 165. So this thing will uh, go off. The alarm will go off at uh, 165 degrees. So we're going to have put this in for about 45 minutes. It may take longer, less. I'll let you know when it comes out what the total time was. At uh, 400 degrees, 45 minutes, and we let it go. And uh, I did preheat the oven for about 10 to 15 minutes at 400 just to get things started so it doesn't start off with a cold oven. All right, so now the chicken turkey meatloaf is cooled for probably a couple hours. It's pretty cool here. I made a chicken gravy for it uh, and added a little bit of basil for looks. It's, you know, it's got to look good before you eat it. Uh, so I'm going to give this a taste. So. Let's cut into it. So it, it held up pretty well. It, it didn't fall apart at all, as you can see here. It actually sits pretty well. And the top has a nice crust. That's the uh, that barbecue sauce is going to give a little bit of sweetness, a little flavor to it, a little spice. Uh, there's some chipotle uh, peppers in that. Uh, so let's uh, let's dig right in. Oh, that's good. Really good. It almost reminds me of a uh, turkey stuffing or uh, Thanksgiving Day turkey stuffing. So this chicken and turkey blend mix. Uh, if you're not a big turkey fan for Thanksgiving, this will work out well too. Just, uh, just give it some time to cool off so it, it can cut and it doesn't fall apart. I hope you enjoyed my version of a chicken and turkey meatloaf. Uh, let me know in the comments section below what uh, what you think of it, what kind of meatloaf you like. Some likes, go ahead and share if you enjoyed it, and uh, check out some of these videos on the side here. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.